Hey, it's Dirk from Sentry. In this video, we're going to talk about how to connect GitHub to your Sentry organization. This video will cover GitHub Online, not GitHub Enterprise. We'll try to do a video in the future about GitHub Enterprise. Also, it's worth mentioning that uh, depending on the Sentry plan you're on, some of these capabilities may or may not be available. So make sure to check with uh, your Sentry rep to see if you have the full capabilities for our integration. Let's take a look at what happens when you don't have this set up. And then we'll go ahead and uh, push our code to GitHub and set the integration up. So this is our project that we set up in previous videos. If you haven't seen those, uh, you feel free to go back and watch them if you need to. But ultimately, we sent in our first issue. If we click on that issue and scroll down just a little bit, we'll see uh, that we sent in a release. So when we initialized, initialized the Sentry SDK, we uh, set a release. Um, if we look at that, um, it created automatically, it automatically created a release. Now, we would recommend that you do this more explicitly than just setting it in the SDK, but but that's what happened. So you, you get that uh, release info. Let's go back to that issue. And we can also see on the right-hand side that right now this is owned by nobody. Uh, we can certainly assign someone if we want to. Um, we'll cover code owners in a future video, but code owners will allow you to specify a code owner file in GitHub and then automatically assign this owner if you like. Sentry also provides that functionality. So in that video, we'll talk about both options. Then down here, we can see the issue uh, is, is not being tracked, or essentially we're giving you a message here that says, go ahead and connect your Git repo. So if we go here, it's gonna take us to integrations because we haven't actually connected it. And we'll see the difference once we connect it in that spot. Okay, why don't we go ahead and push our code up and then let's connect our Sentry project to uh, our Git repo. Let's go back to VS Code now. I still have this project running. Let's go ahead and shut it down just temporarily. And let's just check to see what we have going on here. So we have a number of untracked files, basically our uh, vconfig, our source public, our package files, and our index. And we have a git ignore specified. Let's go ahead and start tracking these and then we can go ahead and push them up to GitHub. So a git add, let's do our first commit. Technically, GitHub does a commit when you create the repo. So we'll do our initial commit part two. And there are all of our files that we're gonna push up and then let's do a push origin main. And that's it. Now, if we flip back over to our browser and go to our repo and refresh it, we should have all our files here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and connect Sentry up to this so we can start tracking uh, commits and uh, suspect commits and uh, yeah, get the benefits out of our GitHub integration. So to do that, we go back to Sentry. We're already in this page. If for whatever reason you didn't use the link from the issue, you can get to this just as easily by going to settings. So if I go to settings, then I can go to integrations and uh, I can find my uh, GitHub integration right here. You can see it's not installed. So let's go ahead and install it. Let's add the integration. I'll pull this down. This is just the configuration screen. So this is gonna just give you the, the initial, hey, what are we doing when you give us access to your repo kind of disclaimer info. So we'll click on the configure and then it takes us to the um, GitHub accounts that we have access to. So mine is QuickStark, I also have access to Sentry demos. I could set up either one. Then I have to decide, do I want to give Sentry access to all my repositories or just that repo that we set up? I'm gonna leave it at all repositories, but feel free to change this if you like to just that repository. And then it gives you some basic permissioning for the scopes and then you hit install. And now it should be, uh, it should be added. By virtue of adding this, and in a minute, we're gonna add a code mapping so that we map that repo to our specific project in Sentry. So we still have to do the linkage. That first step, all we did was just authorize uh, 
century to see our overall GitHub account, but it hasn't tied the repo for our demo project with the project in Sentry yet. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, but once you do that, then you can track commit data. So our automatic configuration for this allows you to uh, track that commit data. So let's add that repo. Here I can see all of the things I've given access to. This is my entire Git account. And if I wanted to just filter down, we can get to that React Sentry GitHub project. And now I've added this repo. So now Sentry is aware of this and you can see why it's, it's relevant to connect the repo because you could have lots of different repos. You may not want to track all of them with Sentry. You may not have a correlating Sentry project for all your repos, but this is how you make that connection. The next thing that we need to do to get stack trace linking uh, up and running, and what that means, if we go back to the issue that we have here, and we go down to the stack trace, which is starts right here, we want to be able to uh, associate what we see in this stack trace with the source uh, code in the repository. So to do that, if we go back to that integration, we can set up a code mapping. If I go to code mapping, this is going to provide the information that Sentry needs to fetch that appropriate, uh, the appropriate source code from your repo. Let's go ahead and click add code mapping. And now you'll see we can define the Sentry project and the repo that we're connecting together. So this is where does this project find my source code? Our branch these days, or more commonly, when you create new repos in uh, GitHub, you're going to have the branch called main, not master. But if you have a, a historical repo, a lot of times the older ones are named master. So mine is named main because we just created this. And then stack trace root and source code root allow you to adjust where Sentry should look for your source code if it doesn't map the if it doesn't match excuse me the path in the stack trace so if you're noticing uh, problems with your stack trace identifying your source files it's probably because there's a disconnect between what we're seeing come across from the stack trace and the way your repo is configured and you may have to go in here and change this so you may have to add something like if, uh, if your stack trace just says main.py, for example, um, uh, you may have to add source in front of it by way of example uh, and get rid of the pi, just so that it eliminates, excuse me, that, um, that extra path element in your stack trace. It's hard to predict exactly what the behavior is gonna be, so you'll just have to pay attention when you set this up and see if there are any problems and then make adjustments here. I'm gonna leave this alone for right now and hit save changes. And now I should have direct code mapping to my GitHub repo. If we go back to the issue now, we should see uh, on the right-hand side where we didn't have uh, anything before, now I can go ahead and create a GitHub issue directly with that GitHub integration. Now there's some other things that we need to do here to make this more valuable. Right now, this particular stack trace is perfectly legible. And the reason for that is because I'm running it on my local host and I'm not running it through a build, uh, uh, a built uh, configuration, meaning I haven't built this project yet. When I build the project, it's gonna minify the code. And in a, in a future video, we'll show what that looks like. When I minify the code, this stack trace becomes illegible. And we solve that by uploading source maps. It's another part of this process. And you can do that through our GitHub integration and through Git Actions or through the Sentry CLI. So we'll cover that in a future video. Hopefully this initial video was helpful. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks.